my name is Mark Wells and once again I'm going to take you through a little session on the FES flower essences. What I'd like to talk again on is the combinations, the flourish combinations of FES flower essences. Uh, we did uh, a previous session on them but there's a few more that I think you'll find really useful. And the first one I want to talk about is Flora Sleep. For many years obviously in practice um, often people have sleep issues but I think from my perspective anyway and certainly from my practice there's more of it and my understanding of that is we look around the world all the things that are going there's this stuff going on in the back of our minds and that that's the very stuff that sort of comes up in our dreams not specifically but it you know it can you know produce a restless night's sleep when we've got these things going on in the background and little concerns about the bigger picture. So that can play a part as well. Flora sleep can help with the quality of sleep when there's night terrors, so it can be given to younger kids, but also adults, obviously. Um, restless sleep, getting to sleep, all of those things. It's, it's a great combination. And I might just pluck out um, three of them just to give you a, a sort of broad perspective of how useful it can be. White chestnut, is a, a bark flower that's in it and that's for recurring thoughts and things like that that you're winding in the mind but from the FES St John's wort is in there and St John's wort is is one that I'll, I'll actually talk about the plant itself it, it, it has little minute holes in it uh, and that's to get the energy of the sun that's to absorb all those things but it's an interesting thing it's um, when you think of that on an energetic level it's very open and that's why it helps people, uh, helps human beings when they're a bit open. A few little niggling fears, can't even put their finger on what it is. Um, but that sort of thing often means that when they go to sleep, they're very open. Let's say become a victim of sort of night terrors and uneasy dreams. So St John's Ward can help almost like protect us, seal us. Um, and so we can have a, a more uh, pleasant sleep, a more relaxed sleep. There's a number of other FES and, the, and just one other little one, I, I'm, I don't usually do this, but just the bark flower olive is in there. And that's also for when you're overtired. You know, sometimes we can be so tired we can't slow down, so it can help in that area. So great combination and it really does cover all aspects of, um, that you might find in practice with people. The next one is called Grounding Green and it fundamentally is helping us to get in touch with nature, to take from it, to absorb the good uh, energy from uh, our natural surroundings, which is even more relevant if we're living in city, in the city. What it does is help us to get the most from when we do walk through the park. It's almost to, to reconnect with that mother nature, that energy very grounding uh, for us. A couple of the flower essences, uh, green rose, um, and that's sort of re reconnecting a heart connection uh, with the environment, with the natural environment, balancing the body. And again, being able to gain all that sort of natural, vibrant, vital energy that you can from uh, the natural environment. Green nicotiana, uh, another one that's particularly useful for people who really live in the city, surrounded by concrete and buildings, occasional park and occasional tree, that can, we can become hardened in that sense by the harsh environment. And green nicotiana can lessen that, it can it soften that. It doesn't mean we be any weaker and vulnerable to what's the harshness that's around us, but it will again uh, mean that we don't lose that inability to absorb the good stuff by you know spending all our time really just shoving off the, the harshness that's around us in city life. So a, a great one for people when they're in, in the city to actually make the best of what there is around them and the, the green environment that's there. So again this grounding green has a, a lot of potential that we you know you've got to really look into it. Another one is magenta self-heal. Self-heal says it all. It's that belief in yourself uh, that you can heal yourself. 
but also tapping into the, the self recuperative powers that you have and the self healing powers and self heal can help us reconnect with that. It can help others do that, help our clients do that. Echinacea is another one that's in it. And echinacea, as we know, echinacea as a herb is, is, a, is a wonderful um, protective remedy for, uh, for our immune system. But if you think about that in the more subtle realm, um, echinacea is the same. You know, on the more subtle area, you know, building and strengthening our natural immunity, particularly when it's been bombarded and, and damaged on that more etheric, if you like, uh, subtle level. Echinacea can repair, strengthen us uh, against, you know, all that, um, again, city life, that bombardment that we get from um, sensors and all of those things. And Love Lies Bleeding is another one in there, and that's more to help us accept more our limitations, but also accept the processes we have to go through our illness. Um, it, perhaps even more accepting of if there's pain associated, things like that, not to resist so much in a sense, and so we can move forward and resolve um, and become healed. So it's that acceptance, um, but also learning from it, learning from our disease, learning from our illness. And I, and I always say this to people, um, and this is none of, none of this new age you're responsible for creating it. It's more about you, what do you want to take from that? Listen to your body. Um, in my new next book, I have a little section called Message in My Body, um, instead of Message in the Bottle. So. And, you know, it's just about understanding and appreciating what does that mean? What's, what, what is my body telling me? So all of these things um, are in Magenta Self Heal and they can just help that person become whole again. And the next one I'd like to look at is grief relief. It speaks for itself and we know how important that is. We know how important processing your own grief is ultimately for your health, overall health, physical health as well. Lots of research supports that. Unresolved grief has a, a very negative impact on your physical health ultimately. We all grieve differently. Uh, and it's interesting, the, the grief relief um, has a number of different remedies in it that caters for that uh, because there is no set way to grieve, whatever you are grieving. And um, so just looking at a few, bleeding heart is one, you know, it's, it is for broken hearts. It is for loss. Um, it's allowing you to, to let go of the attachment, keep the good stuff, keep the good memories, keep the, the good parts of any relationship, but let go of the, the sadness, let go of the, the attachment to some degree and move, move forward. This is nothing you can do overnight, but it just helps that process when there has been a broken heart. Borage is another one. Borage is one of the greatest remedies for when we're fa facing um, personal challenges. And there is no greater personal challenge than losing someone very close to you that you will no longer have certainly a, um, on this earth together. So borage helps keep you buoyant. It, it helps keep, keep you positive, despite the fact of, you know, there's this sadness, this grief that you're dealing with, but you can also have some positive emotions to keep things up, keep things up not to fall too much, not to sort of spiral down into the depths. Borage helps keep you positive. And just one other one I'll, I'll mention is forget-me-not. And forget me not is about remembering, obviously, but it's about remembering the good things. The good things that you had, say if you are grieving the loss of a person or a, an animal, um, a pet or whatever it is, but also getting a sense that you're always connected. You always have been connected. You were obviously very connected in life, but there's a connection going on. And depending on your, you know, Religious, spiritual beliefs, you can look at that any way you like, but forget me not just remind you that you haven't completely lost, that there is that connection that goes on forever uh, with those people that you've been really connected with. Okay, thanks for that today and we'll see you next time.